Hey Folkies! In this video I will give you my 7 best tips or steps if you are a total beginner on how to play the Swedish Nikaharta. Of course these are just based on my own experience and my own opinions as well but I think that it can be very useful to many of you both beginners and much more advanced players even including pros uh, so yeah here comes my best tips on how to become very, very good at playing the nickel harpa. Step 1. Be a Nordic, or in other words, as Viking as you can get. So nickel harpa is an ancient Swedish instrument, right? So this means it is a Viking. And in order to play it very well, you want to get close to its essence, to its true soul. So if you are a Nordic, that's great, <laughs> you don't have much more to do. If you're not sure, you can take a DNA test and you can claim yourself to be a Nordic with minimum 0.5% Nordic blood. However, perhaps you don't have this little tiny piece of Viking blood to claim or, for example, the, the DNA test is just too expensive or something, so you can still be Viking enough if you look the part. In all cases, you should look the part. So you should have ancient Viking clothes, and you should have Viking hairstyles and makeup, and don't forget the name, especially on social media. Step two, get a nickel harpa show it to the world so congratulations now you've got your nickel harpa what an amazing instrument right it looks so very cool so now you can actually show it so people understand how cool you have become by just getting a nickel harpa they will find you cool even if you cannot play it yet or at all i guarantee so what is very important now is to put your nickel harpa in all your pictures, profile and so on, and in the background of everything, to talk about it a lot, even if you don't know anything about it, and you want to like tag nickel harpa nerd on your Instagram posts and everything, so you can really like be there, be out there with your new cool instrument. Also, in order to display it properly, you want a professional stand. Don't listen to people who have played on stage for 30 years with like a chair to hold their nickel harpa, because this really looks amateur and you do not want to look amateur for your first concert in like two weeks, so you really want a professional looking stand. Step 3. You also need a bow! So sometimes you are lucky and a bow is included with your nickel harpa when you purchase it, but sometimes it is not, and in that case you will have to find a bow. No worries, it is not that hard at all, you can just like google a bit to see what a bow is made of, and it's actually just like a curved stick with a little bit of horse hair on it. So you can go to your garden or the forest and find a branch that is roughly the good shape and then you can tie some horse hair to both ends of it and horse hair you can get either from like a horse riding friend or like a farm or from the latest medieval fair that you went to when you do that you want to tense the horse hair as much as possible but don't worry if it's still like a little bit loose there's no problem you can adapt the way you hold the bow when you play it's not really important how you hold, as long as it works for you. It will not change the sound anyways, so just find something that works for you and it's gonna be fine. Step 4. Now it's time to play! Just play, and by that I mean don't listen to people who tell you to tune. Seriously. Tuning a nickel harpa takes forever, especially the understrings that you won't play on anyways, you don't use them anyways, so why even tuning them? People are just trying to sell you tuners, and you know, in the old times, there were no tuners anyways, <laughs> so it's really trying to steal your money, and if you want a true ancient sound, don't listen to them, and you do not need to tune, just do like in the old times, you don't need to tune. Also, similarly, don't listen to people who tell you to clean your nickel harpa. They are just, again, trying to sell you products for cleaning your instrument. This is not necessary because what you want is a true ancient sound, which has patina. And elements such as rain and dust and everything, they will add patina 
to your sound so you want that so nope don't listen to them and just let your instrument get its natural patina step five play true Nikal Harpa music and by this I mean of course Viking music it is quite difficult because we don't know very much about Viking music but there are ways to learn more about it the easy one is to check Viking bands and to cover their songs to a note. So really listen and learn how they do the arrangements and really like cover as much as you can. Then when you're used to that, you can actually compose your own tunes in a similar style. And don't forget to have like a lot of mythological Nordic themes and also room names if you have like some lyrics and all trance inducing simple lines of melody and perhaps like drums and throat singing and don't forget the most important loss of echo for a true ancient atmosphere lastly if you must really if you must you can also take more recent folk tunes but often they don't really sound like Nicaraguan music they are way too complicated and fast and yeah they are too modern so what you want to do is to simplify them quite a bit. You want to take away also their names because they are not all Norse sounding. So you don't want to have tunes that are not like Nicol Harper like. And if you want to sound legit, you will just keep the word traditional. This sounds always legit. Step six, get familiar with the three or four best notes. So you don't want to be one of these modern, show-off, jazz-inspired musicians who play like super complicated tunes and show off that they can climb and go up and down and everything. They are really ahead of themselves. They are playing way too many notes, they are tiring to listen to and they are very uninspired in the sound. You don't want to go in this direction at all. So what you want to do is to get a true, inspiring, authentic nickel harpa sound. So you're gonna select the three or four best notes on your nickel harpa and you will learn to play just on these. You want to play the best sounding notes, obviously, and also these will never be high up in the keyboard because obviously these keys are way too tiny and fiddly they are actually not meant to be played. No true Nicarpa player plays on these tiny, stupid keys. Step seven, trust your own unique musical talent. What I mean there is do not listen to people who criticize your playing. You have natural inspiration inside of you, especially if you followed step one and you are Nordic enough, of course. So you want to trust yourself and do not listen to jealous critics. Teachers will only want to crush your natural talent and to push you into a mold to make you just like themselves. So you don't want lessons, you don't want workshops or courses, you just need to trust your innate natural talent and Nordic inspiration. Okay folks, that is all for this video. I hope that these seven tips helped you. Let me know what you thought about them in the comments. It took me some time to figure them out, but I thought that sharing them with the world would be beneficial. And let me also know your Nekaharpa journey and if you have an instrument and if you play it, what you like to play on it. Like, tell me a bit about your own Nekaharpa story. And remember to like and subscribe and do all this YouTube stuff. Also, if you find this video enjoyable, you can support me on Patreon, link in the description. And that is all for me today. I will see you in the next video. Hello!